और क्या आपने व्हाट्सएप किए सॉरी सर मैं क्या आप किसी को नोट भेजा आपने कि इसमें पार्टिसिपेंट्स कम है जी सर लोगों के साथ किया जो है शेयर अच्छा चलो तो मैं तो बात करते हैं लोगों को हम स्टार्ट करते हैं बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑन द अबाउट बेटर लाइफ स्टडीज इन आवर फूड सेमिनार्स तो फॉर द सेवन सेमिनार्स ऑन द टॉपिक ग्रीन सिंथेसिस ऑफ मेनी पार्टिकल्स इन द एप्लीकेशन बाय डॉक्टर जैकमन जीन्स असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जी डॉक्टर साहब The topic of my discussion uh, is green synthesis of nanoparticles and their application. It is very interesting uh, topic, and very uh, as well as a hot topic. My name is Zahid Manzoor. I am working as assistant professor in Department of uh, Parasitology and Microbiology, which comes under the faculty of Veterinary and Animal Sciences. Here, my Alisha Arad Agriculture University, Rawal Pindi. Faculty of Veterinary and Animal Sciences is one of the leading uh, faculties in Pakistan, which is serving best in livestock sector. First of all, uh, we will share and discuss about the contents what we are going uh, through. in start we will discuss about the introduction what is nanotechnology how nanoparticles are synthesized what is the importance of nanoparticles in uh, field in different fields for example agriculture biomedical engineering then their application in different fields future of the nanotechnology how it is impacting uh, the globe what can be done and at the end we will discuss about the conclusion what we learn from today first of all aims and objectives what are the aims why we are uh, studying this nanotechnology to understand the nanotechnology what is nanotechnology and what are the nanoparticles to understand how the nanoparticles are synthesized what is their structure and then we will discuss about the application of nanoparticles uh, what are the areas where the nanoparticles are uh, applied and how they are beneficial so we will uh, we, we are going to start with the introduction nanotechnology this is a new research area dealing with the development of nanoparticles and nanomaterials for their utilization in various fields including in catalysis electrochemistry food technology sensors pharmaceuticals or cosmetics etc what are the nanoparticles these are the nanometer size less than 100 nanometer atomic or molecular scale solid particles having excellent physical properties compared to their bulk molecules depending on their size and morphology they have different properties as compared to their original precursor molecule for example uh, initially if we have a cube uh, and we we are going to make the nanoparticles from that cube so we can get the spherical as well as rod shape or uh, round so their properties change uh, according to their shape size etc which is different from the original material here from this figure we can understand that this is a cube 
and this has a different uh, areas and total is total area is six centimeter cube and each side is one centimeter the same size cube in the next uh, here you can see and here the size is reduced from uh, centimeter to millimeter cubes all are one millimeter cube it is 10 times smaller so you can see that the surface area is increased here when we convert this uh, millimeter into one nanometer cubes you can see that the surface area is uh, very increased so what is the benefit of this increased surface area this surface area can interact with so many uh, particles or tissue or microbes so it can uh, perform action in a good manner if there is a catalytic reaction it can increase the catalytic reaction or it can penetrate in the cells the permeability of this material is increased so basically the size of the uh, material matter and when this size is reduced to a nanometer uh, its shape is also changed and its properties are changed next is the synthesis of nanoparticles nanomaterials are synthesized by using two approaches top down approach and bottom up approach here first we will discuss about that top down approach and top down approach is, uh, which is also known as physical method here you can see this is a uh, bulk material and this is a cube we can reduce its size using different techniques and we convert this into powder form you can see here its shape is changed it can be uh, spherical or another shape and when we convert it into nano size then its shape can uh, could be uh, uh, of any kind it can be rod square or round shape so when the size is reduced to nanometer its uh, shape and its uh, properties are changed the next approach is bottom up approach the bottom up approach is also known as physical and chemical method in this you can see that the atoms and molecules are combined together and they made cluster and from this cluster we can convert this into nanomaterials the size of these atom and molecules is increased and now they are the nanometers in and their uh, size is less than 100 nanometer so their shape is uh, also variable and it can could be changed here as we discussed that there are two approaches of uh, synthesis of nano materials uh, bottom down and top up so first we will discuss about the top down uh, method in the top down method we use uh, this is also called as physical method and different techniques are used for uh, developing the nano material among them vaporization lithography laser ablation spray paralysis photo radiation and ultrasonications are used next is bottom up in bottom up we use different techniques for example chemical and in chemical chemical reduction co precipitation electrochemistry and for photochemical reductions methods are used next is the biological method in bottom up uh, techniques so in this biological technique we use plant plant extract bacteria yeast algae virus or fungus these are used here the, in the physical method we use uh, and require too much sophisticated instruments and we need high cost it's very costly method in case of chemical method there is a probability of uh, toxicity so we avoid chemical and th uh, this method also needs sophisticated method and equipment while in case of biological method except plant in case of bacteria yeast algae fungi or virus uh, we need <coughs> specified labs and sophisticated instruments for the production of bacteria virus or yeast but in case of plant it's very cheap and easy because the plants are we can grow the plants in field very easily so we don't need sophisticated instruments as compared to 
other uh, yeast or virus or fungi, etc. So the plot method is preferred in biological method. So we will focus on biological synthesis of nanomaterials. For this purpose, we use different uh, method as we explained already, but here we can see in detail that we can use roots, leaves, and fruits of vegetables, fruits. The other method is in biological senses, we can use fungi and yeast. And another source is bacteria and cyanobacteria or vegetable base. We can also use other micro and macro algae, which is available in uh, ponds or sea. So what we, do, uh, what we do with this, we convert this into drier liquid extracts. We get extract from uh, these roots or leaves or uh, fruits. In this extract, we collect sugar, proteins, enzymes, alkaloids, terpenes, and others. It's, next, what we do, we combine the precursor salts and these enzymes or proteins. We incubate and we uh, check the concentration, temperature, salt, and extract, uh, extract, et cetera. We combine these all together and monitor for uh, certain time, specific time, and the concentrations matter. After incubation, we can get the coated biogenic metal-based nanomaterials. Here, the material what we use, the roots, uh, leaves or fruits and the precursor salt, they develop the nanomaterial and the properties of nanomaterial is different as compared to the precursor salt. And this depends on the uh, roots or leaves or fruits, what, whatever we have used. And it depends on the functional group of the uh, salts or fruit. Here we will describe it in detail, the biological synthesis. For that purpose, we use the leaves, uh, our uh, fruit, our seeds, vegetables, our stem, our flower. We can use anything from this. So the plant part, the root, leaf, bark, etc., are washed thoroughly with distilled water and then cut into small pieces and boiled to perform the extraction. These extracts can be purified by filtration and centrifugation. Different ratios of plant extract, metal salt, solution, and water and are used for nanoparticle synthesis. This reaction mixture is incubated further to reduce the metal salt and monitored for a change in color. After incubation of reaction mixture, it can be mixed thoroughly and centrifuge at different speeds to remove any medium uh, components or large particles. Finally, the nanoparticle can be centrifuged at, with, at a high speed with the density gradient washed thoroughly in water solvent uh, and corrected in the form of a bottom pellet. So this is the method. Basically, uh, we take the plant, uh, we can select either fruit leaf, roots, or seeds, then we can wash thoroughly, and then uh, we can get the extract, then we can purify it by centrifugation, then incubate with the precursor salt along with the extract. After that, we can incubate, and then uh, after incubation, we mix, um, sorry, we, we mix thoroughly and centrifuge at different speeds to remove the medium uh, components or large particles. And at final stage, when we centrifuge, we can collect the nanoparticles at the bottom. Here, the mechanism of action, mostly uh, we check the antimicrobial activity. So as an example, we are just uh, checking the mechanism of action of nanoparticles against microbes. So there are different methods how it performs its antimicrobial activity. One is the, it rupture the cell wall of the bacteria. Next, it, it can also inhibit the protein synthesis. If the protein synthesis is inhibited, then bacteria cannot grow. It can inhibit the bacterial reproduction. 
It can also lyse the cell membrane. If the cell membrane of the bacteria is lysed, then bacteria cannot survive. It has to die. So there are different uh, mechanisms of action of nanoparticles against the bacteria. So next comes the characterization. How we characterize? There are different techniques to characterize the bacteria. The first one is uh, ultraviolet visible UV with spectrophotometer. What we do with this, we use this technique to confirm the senses of nanoparticles. The wavelength of reaction of sample is measured using UV with spectrophotometry. Next is the scanning electron microscopy, SEM. We also use the uh, transmission electron microscope through SEM. We can check the morphological analysis of the synthesized nanoparticle. We also perform the Fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer uh, spectroscopy, uh, and which is in short term called as FTIR. It identifies the functional group that are responsible to stabilize the nanoparticle. This functional group comes from the plant and the uh, activity of the material uh, nanoparticle changes with the change in the uh, functional group of the uh, plant. If we change the plant, then the activity of the nanoparticle will be changed and that depends on the functional group of the plant. Next is the energy dispersive X-ray EDX analysis. So using this EDX, we analyze elemental consi uh, constituents of the nanoparticles. So these are the uh, techniques which are mostly used to characterize the nanoparticle where uh, we identify the size of the uh, material, its morphological uh, shapes, and then we identify the functional groups and the constituents, uh, elemental constituents of the nanoparticles. Next is the importance of biosynthetic nanoparticles. Much of the interest of scientists is in production of metal and metal oxide nanoparticle using plant extracts and microbes. Organic route is preferred. What are the reasons? So here are the reasons for which the biosynthetic nanoparticles are produced. The plants are used biological as a biological reducing and capping agent. No extreme requirements are uh, needed as in case of a physical method where we need uh, sophisticated ball milling uh, techniques and it requires the high cost. Here we use very less energy as compared to physical or chemical method. It can be used at large scale. It's very easy to produce the plants. It's very environment friendly. In case of uh, chemical method, uh, we know that there is a, a toxicity of the chemical, so we prefer this uh, biosynthetic um, um, approach as compared to chemical method. The next reason is the cost effective. It's very cheap as compared to chemical or physical method, which is very expensive, and as well as there are the uh, chances for uh, pollution. So the biosynthetic nanoparticles synthesis is preferred over physical method or chemical method. Application of biogenic nanoparticles. Biogenic nanoparticles are applied in different fields. Here we summarize this. They are best antimicrobial why they are best in uh, act as an antimicrobial agent, although we have a chemical uh, anti uh, chemical substance which are uh, best in performing uh, antibacterial activity. So we have antibiotic, synthetic, and natural. But in case of nanoparticles, um, they are preferred over uh, synthetic antimicrobial activity. 
and they are even better uh, performer as compared to synthetic antibiotics. They have anti-cancerous activities and as well as antimicrobial activities. In case of anti-cancerous activities, uh, they can control the cancer. Then they have catalytic activities. They can increase the uh, reaction as the size is very small and surface area is very increased. So they are best catalytic uh, activator. Next, they are also used as a biosensor in electronics. They are using the biosensor using nanotechnology. So different devices are prepared by using these devices. We can check the concentration of bacteria, virus, uh, and we can identify whether the, this bacteria size, uh, bacteria quantity or viral load is uh, high or low. So we can diagnose the disease as well. Then there's application clinical and uh, pharmaceutical application. Different uh, nanomaterials are used in clinical practice and pharmaceutical industries. This is the agriculture uh, field where nanomaterials are used. They are used to increase the production and they are also used as uh, nanofertilizers. They are also used in food industry as well as in the textile industry, optical properties, certain nanoparticles have different uh, optical properties and depending on these optical properties, uh, they are used and required in different imaging techniques. So uh, scientists are working on, uh, in this field of the nanoparticles. Next is the drug delivery. In case of uh, drug delivery, nanoparticles are very effective. They increase the permeability of the material for example, if we, have, if we have to deliver the medicine, the nanoparticles are acting as a carrier because their size is very small. So they can cross the blood brain barrier and they can easily uh, enter in the cells and where there they can perform their antimicrobial or antiviral activity. Uh, they can deliver the drug there and it can uh, function well. Even they are used in the vaccines. So to increase the uh, immunogenicity. Here we will discuss in detail the application in drug and medicines. Nanoparticles particles deliver the drugs in optimum dose range uh, and often result in increased therapeutic efficiency of the drugs. How they increase the uh, efficiency of the drugs by providing the, the medicine in the targeted area. We don't need to give too much medicine. Uh, for example, if we are giving uh, in routine the medicine and its dose is very high, but in case of nanoparticle uh, uh, conjugated, we, need, we have to give the very small amount of the antibiotics and we can target the area and we can deliver the drug directly in that area affected area. We don't need to give as a whole, we can reduce the dose as well. This has very less side effects as compared to the uh, normal conventional medicine and uh, medicines because we are giving the medicine at the targeted site. Different uh, magnetite or uh, hematite are commonly used uh, in biomedical applications. They also have uh, some optical properties and these optical properties are required in imaging uh, techniques. So uh, in biological sciences, different uh, biological engineers are using these nanoparticles for imaging uh, techniques. Application in manufacturing and materials. Nanoparticles have uh, the properties which deviate from the respective bulk material and that depends on the size. So nanocrystalline materials provide a very interesting substance materials for developing the products, which is different from the precursor material. The scientists are also uh, looking for certain application within the medical and commercial and ecological uh, sectors because they have different characteristics and properties. Application in the environment. 
Most of the environmental application of nanotechnology includes, they are used to reduce the pollution. They are used to treat the material contaminated with hazardous substances. They are also used as a sensor for environmental stages. They are also used to uh, treat heavy metals such as mercury, lead, cadmium, and arsenic from natural water. So in environment, they are being used. Application in electronics. In last few years, printed electronics is at boom and people are working in this field. Printed electronics is attractive and beneficial over traditional silicon techniques because of their low cost, large area, and sensors. Functional inks are used containing nanoparticles and used in electronic equipment. Next is the application in energy harvesting. As we know that we have limited fossil fuels in coming areas due to their non-renewable nature. So now scientists are focusing on renewable energy from easily available resources. For that purpose, nanoparticles are the best candidate because of their large surface area, catalytic nature, and optical behavior. Next is application in mechanical industries. Nanoparticles offer many application in mechanical industries, specifically in coating, lubrications, and adhesive applications. They are also very useful to achieve mechanically stronger nano devices for various purposes. Application in drug delivery. In drug delivery, they are they have revolutionized. Nanoparticles are used to treat various challenging diseases which were uh, unable to be treat. Nanoparticles have the ability to de deliver the drugs to specific tissue. So now we don't need to give uh, the high dose and overall in the body, but we can target the area and we can deliver the drug there directly. We can use these nanoparticles to provide controlled release specific uh, therapy. The targeted and sustained drug delivery decreases the drug related toxicity and increase the patient's compliance with less frequent dosing. So here, what we achieve, we achieve the uh, reduce the toxicity as well as we increase the compliance and decrease the dose as well. Nanotechnology has proven beneficial in the treatment of cancer, also pro uh, providing the advancement in diagnostic testing. We can uh, we have developed many uh, devices through which we can check the uh, disease and diagnose it in early stage. Application in vaccine development. There are different problems in vaccinology, such as low Im immunogenicity, high toxicity, instability, and need for multiple administration of vaccines. The role of nanotechnology in this regard is very beneficial. The use of nanoparticles in vaccine offer two main advantages. The first one is it acts as an adjuvant and it enhances the antigenicity of the vaccines. In this way, they can mimic the feature of uh, pathogens such as the viruses. The second one, it can in induce the adaptive immune response and innate immune response. Furthermore, they utilize antigen. Uh, they, uh, they are utilized as antigen carrier to enhance the antigen processing and presenting, owing to their specific surface area and functionality. These qualities of nanoparticles have resulted in the efficient targeting of cells and controlled release of the antigens. Na nanoparticles have both capabilities of controlled release of antigen and extending the half life of most of the vaccines. So when the vaccines are released in a slow manner, the body is exposed continuously to the antigen and there's an increased response of the immune system. 
Application in agriculture. Nanotechnology is helping in reducing the amount of spread of chemicals, minimizing the nutrient loss and increase in the yield. Nanotechnology is playing a role in disease diagnosis, treatment of, and enhancing the capacity to absorb the nutrients. Nanotechnology are the best example to, nanofertilizer are the best example to increase the production at very low cost. They also protect the different insect and microbial disease. Next is the future of nanotechnology. Nanote nanotechnology application in various industrial sectors from energy to medicine can clean water have broad radical change in the life of many countries. By implement, implementing successful strategies, nanotechnology can change the world. Pakistan can also make the potential advancement through nanotechnology to address the core issues of millions of people. In 2014, Pakistan Council of Science and Technology under the Ministry of Science and Technology formed a think tank of the country of well-known scientists. I think, sorry, there was a connection error. So the think tank of uh, the think tank yeah. rightly identified the nine key priority areas in nanoscience and technology, energy biomedical science, industrial and engineering materials, nanofabrication devices, human resource development for nanoscience and technology, clean water and environment, ethics, safety and regulation, food and agriculture and catalysis. Next is the conclusion. The application of nanotechnology is increasing nowadays due to their effectiveness in all fields of science. The nanoparticles, which are commonly synthesized for solving different kinds of problems in medicine, drug delivery, vehicle, and agriculture. There are some drawbacks in using metal oxide because of their higher toxicity when it is used in higher concentration. In future, the med metal oxide and particle play a role in So thank you. We are open for questions. If you have any questions, please. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Please, any question, please. For the session after questions. He's a hard one. Can you please mute that, Nasser? Uh, any question, please? Uh, any participants? Uh, Dr. Mubu Darshad Dar. Thank you. Um, any question? Not any questions, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sir. Dr. Jagman, you said. Thank you, sir. For good informative knowledge for the participants. Uh, for this study, the study is very good. Uh, thank you, sir. And, uh, also, I thank all the participants for this participation. Thank you for all the participation and good informative knowledge for the participants. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, sir.